um, first of all, thank you so much for coming. This is the biggest audience I've seen since 2020. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much. I want to, uh, of course, uh, uh, start with the land acknowledgement and uh, then we will introduce uh, the whole um, event. I wish, we wish uh, to acknowledge uh, this land on which uh, the University of Toronto and the Fields Institute operate. Uh, for thousands of years, this area has been the traditional land of Euron Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still the home of many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. And I know that some of you are coming from Guelph, or some of you are coming from uh, Waterloo and uh, Kitchener, so I encourage everybody to think about the land where they are coming from. Um, okay, so thanks everybody for coming to this uh, uh, event. This is an event that is uh, uh, been uh, um, planned for some time, and I really thank uh, I thank you, my guest. I thank you, the poets who accepted to come here, and I thank Field uh, for hosting us and for giving us this beautiful location, and also Sure, who uh, which um, was able to give us uh, uh, like support uh, to make sure that this event happened. And of course, the artists who um, um, came forth and uh, decided to um, um, participate in this experiment. So uh, I also wanted to um, uh, remind you that this event is also part of an international series, which is uh, uh, the Laser uh, Leonardo. And I would like to invite Nina Lady to say a few words about it. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, thank you, Roberta, not only for this evening, but also the last 10 years <laughs> when uh, Together with uh, Roberta, we have every year twice produced a Leonardo laser, sometimes just a Leonardo laser, sometimes we were lucky to be invited to another. I just would like to tell you that Leonardo laser is a network and it is an independent network from any institutions, just local institutions. And uh, we started very small, but today we are uh, presenting in about 50 uh, 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 places in the world, not 50 countries, I think 40 countries, but quite a large. Uh, thank you again. Thank you. So um, I would like to introduce uh, uh, this event. So this event is part of a series called Resituating, and uh, uh, Resituating More Than Human. Uh, this is an interdisciplinary program bringing together academics, scientists, indigenous thinkers, artists, and the general public to rethink ways to engage with the world of plants and other vegetable life. What we are calling the vegetable more than human, other. Resituating is a collaboration between Artside Salon, and I always forget to introduce myself. My name is Roberta Buiani. I am the artistic director of uh, Artside Salon, and uh, um, Jane Tingley, who is the director of the Slow Lab at York University, and she's also a professor in digital media. And uh, she also curated the show uh, More Than Human, which is uh, ongoing until May 13th at the on-site gallery. Please go to see it because it's absolutely unmissable. So Artsai Salon is uh, based at the Fields Institute for Research in Mathematical Sciences, which is where you are here. But then we also have other events that will take place at the rare charitable, charitable research uh, reserve in Cambridge. 
Ontario, of course. Uh, we will have a forage bathing event uh, like mid uh, May also. And we will have also another talk and uh, round table next week on uh, April 14th, also here at the Fields Institute. Um, so uh, the program's activity here at Fields extends the theme of the exhibition in some way and emphasizes the, uh, rele its, uh, the relevance uh, beyond the arts and um, it's meant to foster dialogue across disciplines and uh, worldviews. So um, you can go on our website, which is uh, artsalon.com, or on our website, which is lowlab.ca. Um, so our program is guided by a few questions that are leading uh, to uh, three main goals. One is how can we reframe our understanding of the human within a world of vegetable complexity? Uh, in this case, we seek to uh, create a space for uh, different perspectives to commingle and distill into more complex uh, understanding of the human and vegetable ecosystem. Second, what does it mean to develop an ethics of inclusion and care that sees humans and non-human life as equal? And uh, lastly, uh, what new mental models can we adopt to help guide how we engage with the world around us? Uh, our goal here is to expand and reconfigure human relationships to the natural world through embodiment, creative experimentation, and intersectional uh, discussion. Um, so all the events and resituating and more than human exhibition are deeply entangled. Uh, overall, we have artist talks, roundtable discussions, field trips, forest bathing, nature walks, workshops, and now a poetry night. The event brings together poetry and science, natural and human architectures, scientific and indigenous thinking to form a site-specific immersive experience for you guys. Uh, in fact, our goal is to create a space for these perspectives to commingle and distill into a more complex understanding of the human vegetal ecosystem. So tonight's event is extremely special um, as it embodies some of the core concepts and the interdisciplinary um, nature of the More Than Human exhibition. I personally have been anticipating this, this uh, event since the moment we conceived of it and I've been looking forward to seeing creativity in the act. Tonight, not only have we brought together some pretty amazing women, uh, women who weave world, uh, words and ideas together in their interdisciplinary poetry, but we're also bringing their ideas alive with responsive visuals that will be projected in real time behind them as they read. Tonight's event brings together four extremely talented women, individuals who in their own way tie together interdisciplinarity, intersectionality, and the love of complexity with a genuine collaborative spirit and willingness to try something new. So we really appreciate that. Uh, the program is highly experimental and is required that these artists trust us and just see how it goes. I would now like to introduce you to our exceptionally talented poets. We have Liz Howard. You want to maybe wave your hand? We have uh, Karen Hool. Where are you? There she is. <laughs> Teeny tiny in the back. And Madur Anand. Where are you? Hello. And also, I'd like to introduce the brilliant visual artist, Kavi, who is behind the computer over there. Hello, Kavi. <laughs> She's in the mothership. <laughs> and she will be creating the live visuals for us to experience tonight. So the program's going to go as follows. Uh, we're going to have Madur and Anne first. She's going to read, followed by a five to 10 minute break. Um, and then we're going to have Karen Poole, followed by another five to 10 minute break, followed by Liz Howard. Afterwards, uh, we'd like to every invite everyone back to Bar Raval, uh, to, which is just a 10 minute walk down college uh, to talk to our amazing poets and artists and, and enjoy a drink and some snacks. Um, we also ask that everyone please silence your phones and um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the events. So um, I'm, before we get started, I'm going to first introduce Cavi because Cavi is going to be present in every single one of these um, uh, poetry readings. So Cavi uh, is Ilsa Brida, also known as Cavi, is a Latvian Canadian artist and researcher working across multiple disciplines, including visual art, interactive installation, and live performance. Her creative practice and academic thesis encompass working with live data sets and designing systems to turn data into visceral experiences. An example would be harnessing data from the forest about trees and their environment or uh, the human body through biophysiological sensing and translating them into immersive narratives. 
Cavi sees data as a living material that can express its essence and inner truth through creative, technological, and artistic intervention. Sometimes it looks too abstract for the human eyes. However, she believes that the more we are exposed to weird and unusual, the more we stretch our cognitive abilities to embrace the world at large. She is currently a third year PhD student in computational arts at York University. Our first poet is Madhur, Madhur Anand. So I'm going to introduce her. Um, you signed us the, the, the bio, but of course I'm, I'm going to elaborate on it because I know I've, I've known uh, Madhur for a while. Every single time I'm doing some um, project, I feel like I'm bumping into her. So, and actually I feel like this event is coming to a, a, a end of the cycle because the first time that I met her, maybe she doesn't remember, but I met her at the rear uh, reserve and uh, we were at this big group and uh, um, she told me about their work, and then I, I went to well to see her um, um, talk in in a talk, I think. And then I invited her to my event, and we were online. So uh, this is the first time that I see her in like four years. So um, she is the author of uh, "This Red Line Goes Straight to Your Heart," um, which she published in 2020, uh, which is an experiential memoir uh, told through the lenses of biology, physics history and poetry. Uh, she also won the Governor uh, General's uh, Literary Award for Nonfiction in 2021. Um, her debut uh, collection of poems, A New Index of Predicting Catastrophes, which is what made me know her, was a finalist for the Trillium Book Award for Poetry, named one of 10 all-time trailblazing poetry collections by the CBC. And, uh, um, but she is going to read today from her, um, a series of poems from uh, her collection Parasitic Oscillation from 2022, which I have in my hand. And I suggest that you uh, go and check it out because it's beautiful. And it also has some fantastic illustrations. And uh, so this was published to international acclaim and named the top pick for spring poetry by the CBC. Global Nails, top 100 books, and and so on and so forth. And I should say that she's also the director of the Welsh Institute uh, for Environmental Research. So, Madhuwar. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Sensible parallels. Behavior emerges from interactions between a nervous system, a peripheral cusp, and the environment. Not obvious, but a picture starts to emerge. Strong fingerprints on the vocal organs. Solutions that might not require separate muscles. The body uttered, uttering. The field notes inspect, inspection. One can call this position borderline, part control, part chaos, the aim of which to unveil a fundamental relationship Instructions for a generation, how to revisit global paths. How can a single source generate both tonal sounds and harmoniously rich sounds? Collision, collided, collide, three roots remain remnant and three roots are born. Bird, birds, bird song, songbirds, songbird, songs, song, syllables. 
So that's a poem found from a scientific article entitled Beyond Harmonic Sounds in a Simple Model for Birdsong Production. Portrait one. How might we utilize these oscillations caused by feedback to bring our multiple understandings of the world closer together? to talk to one another while embracing the inevitability of noise. Phase plane portrait of the mathematical model of birdsong found in Amador and Midland. A simple note. It is basically expected that time is a wave and history the darker diagram of clockwise arrows. Human speech is a subsong of trachea and beak. It is illustrated in this letter how pressure will control not only strength, but also sound. It is expected there be some overlap, tension while mimicking lexicon Emphasis on power. All is transient and symmetric. The slowing curve, the fastest collisions, crossing out each syllable, each precise boundary, first backward, then forward. Stop. Portrait two. Birds are often no longer direct subjects of metaphor, but rather remain strange, sometimes silent, a kind of menacing and stray capacitance, which can cause parasitic oscillations, but still harbingers of discovery and hope. Faith plain portrait of the mathematical model of birdsong found in Gardner et al. Repertoire for a restitution. Learning through imitation, review, maps, memory, writing. Association between dialect and habitat. Similarity of waves, concerted and elastic. Resonance between pure physics and human nature. Question and debate. A family picture pinned against original text. A cycle born without any model, with mini breaths, rings of hope. A path traveling back to a higher dimension. Speculation of history, formant and filtering, tensions and inspirations soft atmospheric time. Uh, that's a poem found from Neuromuscular Control of Vocalization in Birdsong. So this one, those three were found poems from scientific articles. This one is not. Two-part organ or returning to cardinal. Today, my consonants are mere control of airflow. Only my vowels are sung. When I first write two-toned, I mean red or not red, male or female, but now I know more that the root of cardinal is hinge, that the square root is of no use, only squared bifurcations of bronchi, flips between vibrating columns and noise, oscillations doubling, bass and treble, right and hope as the probability of synchrony left I see light couple and decouple beat wings at wrong frequencies, fly into a bush, 
orchestrate landings. The pharynx and the larynx found at a junction. I want those colorless feathers, her colorless lips. Thank you. So I would like to invite the next poet, uh, Karen Houle. Um, so I met Karen, actually I reached out to Karen when I just started doing the research umbrella for the, the research that ended up with the exhibition and ultimately a lot of these events. And I emailed her and she um, was willing to meet with me. And then we basically walked through woods and picked, picked mushrooms together while talking about plant ethics. Um, so Dr. Karen Houle is a recently retired uh, philosophy professor at the Guelph, uh, University of Guelph. Um, and at this point in her life, she's hell-bent on using her immense caffeinated chaotic energy, her acquired social capital, and her well-honed pragmatic attitude of not giving a shit what people think anymore. <laughs> <laughs> to create and inspire joyful art and artful local socio-ecological post-humanistic projects that are, as the poet Anne Bowen wrote, tiny but everything. Houle has five or six or maybe six of these projects on the stove at this very moment and would love to share the stove with others, so no cooking necessary or experience necessary. Uh, all of these projects fall under the umbrella of the art of soil, art plus soil plus collective, where collective does not mean just humans in a bunch uh, doing human stuff <laughs> in the best of all possible worlds or, well, in the only world we have, these efforts of Hools will combine and make good use of all of her political and ethical principles, practical skills, and unruly passions, including food security, grandmothering, plant philosophy, ecology, bush knowledge, environmental pro uh, protection, organic farming, world, word smithing, crafting stuff from stuff, soil remediation, biodiversity, chopping wood, seed saving and giving, uh, pollinator support, composting, mental health gymnastics, biocultural diversity, and swimming. I introduce Karen Hull. So I am going to read one very long poem. It moves through a number of sections, and those sections will be familiar to absolutely everyone who's ever had anything to do with science from the most rudimentary um, and upwards. I wanted to say hi to my curling team at the back. <laughs> and um, also say thanks to Jane for having vision, but also making things happen. Thank you, Jane. And it's a real pleasure to share this stage with Madur and Liz. Like, really fantastic. Um, so I think that the star of this poem is slipperiness and the refusal of things to remain pure. And DNA shows up as the vehicle of purity and the hopes for purity, but also as the vehicle for the horrors of miscegenation or the mixing of beings, which is uh, interesting and fascinating. So <clears throat> this poem um, was written in a particular location all at one time and the location is exactly beside the Grand River, which is a river on whose watershed I live. And it's a massive, important river um, for lots and lots of beings and peoples. And it has been historically, as many of you know, I say hello to it every time I go over it, which is in many places. You cross the Grand many times. Um, so the, the, the poem, uh, which the title of the poem is When North Flows South, so if you just, if you, if you don't like the poem, just you can just enjoy trying to think about what that might mean <laughs> when North flows South. Um, and I really encourage you all as the audience 
as well to to even take up a different mental or physical or psychological posture when you're listening to this poem. It's always strange to be a poet and people look at you. It's like, what? you don't really need to look at me. You can look at the sky. You can look at, the, you can look at your fingernails because you're not really seeing anything up here. The key is to listen and to let the words go through you and do what they can do. And we have an amazing added layer tonight of being able to like, like really just let, let Kavi's um, interpretation, but it's more than interpretation, her sort of parallel flow, flow um, um, to go along with this. So whatever you feel like doing um, to enter this poem, um, as I said, it's a long one, so just get yourself comfortable um, in whatever posture it takes you to be able to take it in. When North, North flows, flows south. south. There's a quote from Gilles Deleuze. He says, it pertains to the essence of becoming, to move and to pull in both directions at once. The pink lace of the wild crab apple froths up out of the Carolinian cleavage. In late May or early June, 200 years ago, the Pennsylvania Deutsch arrived in wooden wagons and they took up on the northern edge of the natural range of the wild apple, Malus coronaria. The Scots came by boat two decades later, followed on foot by those loyal to the crown. The Dodges, the Langdons, the Kilbrides, the Crookstons, and they took up on all the rest. Our evidence suggests that the spatial structuring of community diversity developed rapidly in the first year. Membership was facilitated and constrained within the first few months of formation, including stochastic processes at the initial stages of assembly. I-beams and Holsteins fire-forged, soot, black iron awls and stables and dung and stone stack drywalls. These and their people formed an unbroken chain, the length of the river from Erie to its source on either side. The length of the river from Erie to its source on either side. Footnote one, quote, Six miles in width on each side of the river from Lake Erie to its source was given to the Mohawk Nation and such other six nations, Indians, as might desire to settle thereupon. Quote, Frederick Haldeman and Tyanet de Negea, also known as Joseph Brandt, October 25th, 1784. appears on many early maps as the Use. Augustus Jones himself surveyed it by mistake as the Use at the Conestoga West End of the Aramasa River, now the south branch of the Speed. The Speed entering the Grand like an infinite otter absorbed into faster water and it gushes southward then as if it were the only one. 50 feet across and with a stony bottom, says Augustus Jones. It is perpetually suiciding off the limestone viaduct. A married stream then here, entering in the main, she runs hard and she runs straight as a plumb line from here. 22.9 degrees north, 21.3 degrees west. Hypothesis. Hypothesis. On the off chance, the off leash, the trails ahead in October, the dog lopes, I crunch, a Macintosh, or is it an Empress? And it's browning, the core is pitched, it's thoughtless, as a dog zigzagging, a red backed vole. Under leaf skirts, a rustle, a wolf, a wolf head emerges from the dappled shade, canis lupus, 
The pre-European plant cover of this site is undocumented, but the presence of centuries-old bur oak suggests an open and possibly grass-dominated system. Stump burned, stump burned, perfect, punnet squares of prairie, spade bared shoulders of the Carolinian slopes. And then they planted apples. Hound and I pass a solitary bur oak, Carcus macrocarpa. It's on the Blair Road, just one at the fork of the Aramosa and the Grand. It's a little bit alive. The outermost is photosynthesizing. There are circles, the dog sniffs the circles, the old bones of Nat Dodge's cabin. Nat Dodge's cabin is not much alive either. 1784. Literature review. Literature review. Nicked pips, moldering, endospermic cargo, malice domestica, across the ribs of the North Atlantic, through the rut named Ohio in a handkerchief, here come puny chestnut-colored promises from the old world. They are spit-pocketed. If they ever get there, they might eat something that tastes like home. Prune and graft, splice, splice and sucker, sucker, knock knee ladder, ladder it up and over, split rail, crutches, jam it in the armpits of the drooping limbs, emasculated, flowering in the balloon stage, thrips, thrum, thrip, thrum, and twine the stack boxes of borrowed bees. The borrowed bees are circling the flush faced orchid pinked the very moment that June lets her heat leak out. There's the blossom. An apple is a plain fruit occurring in many parts of the world as an introduced exotic. Footnote three, by Paul Cron and Brian C. Husband, the University of Guelph, hybridization and the reproductive pathways meeting chain flow between native mouse colon coronary and domestica, apple mouse domestica in botany 87, 9, 2009, pages 864, 74. An apple is a plain fruit occurring in many parts of the world as an introduced exotic. Tit round, a fleshy haploid, a peck full, a handful of hips, pinched at the waist, every single flesh imaginable, every skin tone, every shape, every shape of the lips, different again at the tongue, its universes of fruit muscles, red, green, yellow, speckled, russet, white, 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 white on white, rosy pink, dog, piss, yellow, hard, soft, wet, pucker, pucker. Novel phenotypic traits were developed through a variety of breeding technologies. To date, 57 applications for field trials of genetically modified apples have been submitted to the USDA. Catch and release, catch and release apples, formed a subtribe. They drifted. They drifted away from the rich and powerful family Rosaceae, which includes important food crop plants, plums, raspberries, peaches, raspberries, strawberries, raspberries, purus, prunus, and commonly grown ornamentals. Example, Rosa. Roses come in wild. Roses come in wild and roses come in common too. Though populations of immigrant species tended to fluctuate more considerably from year to year, each population was grown in soil collected from each site that had either been sterilized or not to synchronize germination and ensure from each land at least 12 viable seeds. At Thanksgiving, here we are. Here we are at table together. The hard harvest is in. The black and white photo confirms what appeared to be a family. Augustus Jones and Joseph Brandt, quote, a relationship strengthened when Jones married a Mohawk woman with whom he had eight children. In one trial, DNA content proved intertwining branches 
in some cases. In some cases, this was worrisome to those who could recall the days when North only flowed South. Quote, concurrently, Jones had a relationship with a Mississauga Indian woman and produced two more children. Across a fertility gradient, the rose, the dog, the dog rose, the apple-cheeked, loyal-footed children, those children's children's, roots sampled for colonized assessment, their bodies grew flesh of every adaptation, every note, every tone, every red, every green, yellow, speckled, russet, white, white on white, white on white, pink, rosy, dog pissed yellow, every black, white, brown, every shimmel, fair, chestnut mare, all the tones upward of pure. Method. Method, 28 isolates from 21 locations throughout North America. Sequence data for all isolates were deposited in GenBank. No differences in the sequences of five genes among the 28 isolates were observed. The majority rule consensus tree from the Bayesian analysis was included see figure one with Bayesian posterior probabilities and maximum parsimony and neighbor joining bootstrap values included at each node, full stop. The results of the phylogenic analysis, see figure two, demonstrate that SCIJ, hereafter referred to as OCJ, forms a monophyletic group, 100% probability, 99% 9P, and 100% NJ bootstrap values within the family with other members of the same gene is more closely related to the other members of family gene than had previously been related to the species in genus S. Skin it. Skin it. Skin it with a steel edge with your opposing thumbs. There it is, there it is, there is the blood. All the blood is blood red. Malus domestica trees appear to be more advanced in flowering, suggesting an earlier flowering start than Malus coronaria. Your recent barn stands in the damp grass of the baby orchard watching the flowering crab apple and their showy brides waltzing it up on the Wisconsin glacial till. Quote, the genetic integrity of native species does not appear threatened by the introduction of domestics, for the most part. Null hypothesis. Null hypothesis. All the streaming all the sloshing, all the flowing, in closed quarters, steamy, gunnels, below the horizontal weather, below the watercraft, its single shared ribcage with opportunities for hybridization. Yet the thick spermatic coils of type twist about the axes of sameness, otherwise discrete taxa, in neighborhoods, in ports, a shy pair glued to each other below deck, on the school swings, in the viscous nucleolus, quote, selection pressures for reduced interactions. Underneath the water table, a whelped abiotic mass is welded to the base of an accident-free record. Invasion and range expansion estimates. Like pulls like, like pulls itself, its other half is one pull. It is one pull, it pulls hard. Pulls tense, 
Travois, the, the coffin, coffin ships, ships from, from Sligo, Sligo, several on, on the Christian, Christian ark, everyone, everyone and anyone, anyone cheek to jowl, cheek to jowl, cheek to jowl brothers, brothers and sisters and, and twins, twins, twins of every sort, every sort everyone with, with too much time, time on their hands. hands. The probability of mating between cross-compatible species, statistically insignificant for the most part. Confirmation hypothesis. Confirmation hypothesis. An apple and a rose are posing for a still life, lying side by side, awkward, in the absolute metabolic gulag of controlled laboratory conditions. Malice coronaria and malice domestica intermixed within the site, risking extensive interspecific flowering overlap. Despite previous reports showing that the native and introduced gene pools remain distinct, the high proportion of hybrid seeds suggests there's a significant potential for gene flow from domestic apples back into native Malus coronaria populations. The hard rain, the rain and the buckthorn bully the mail order children into grain and into empire. Sweet talking rose thugs back into houseware. But first generation F1 hybrids exhibit almost zero viability. Conclusion. Conclusion. In the overall enterprise of fitness, we are husbandry and we are burning and forcing. And selective reduction and we are slaughter and outcrossing and end of season barn dances. And 200,000 years of tinkering and fish too far south of where they were. In the practices of population management, we are the distance we leave between things and we are the direction we make them flow. The tall grass prairie in Oak Savannah that covered an estimated 100,000 hectares of southwestern Ontario at the time of European settlement today, less than 1% remains. The forward edge of the range of natural history was delivered in foil packets to the northernmost rim of the Carolinian forest. In Waterloo region, it crested like a tidal bore and pivoted south. It was as if somebody had grabbed nature like a hall, hall carpet and shook it hard. The rain climbed back up the clouds, the grand walked barefoot, to a burbling spring west of Alton, Ontario, and she was received as both prodigal and stranger. The oak-shaped shade of this old burr oak, it knows the exact moment Nathaniel Dodge stopped pushing north and he began to farm. Drab clay and sandy loams preponderating. Dairy cows, laying hens, commercial meats, rabbits, broilers, stewing hens, some evidence of equine industry. The barn paint flakes off into Crookston Creek. The farm dog sniffs the ice house slit and whines. Coyotes are getting bolder. Like all things with stomachs, their home range dilates with hunger. 50 feet closer each morning, the kitchen door, the white-tailed deer, they have come to lick the fructose off the abandoned orchards. Figures.
figures. 43 degrees north, 80 degrees west. An 18 hectare agricultural field relatively homogeneous in topography, drainage, and soil depth, less than two meters to bedrock, bounded by old field to the north and east, and a residential hedgerow and a road to the west and the south. 24 native late successional tall grass prairie species were seeded over an environmentally homogeneous agricultural field. Corn. 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 Soybean. Corn, soybean, corn, soybean, sorn, soybean, rotation, corn, soybean, rotation, more than 60 years, corn, soybean, rotation, 60 years, devoid of vegetation at the time of planting. That's from Emily Drysteck and Andrew McDougall's Granivory Reduces Biomass and Lignin Concentrations of Plant Tissue During Grassland Assembly in Basic and Applied Ecology, 2014. Devoid of vegetation at the time of planting, base stock parameterized. 100 by 100 chains of management, decades of plowing, decades of plowing and herbicide application. Directions for future research. Directions for future research. The Pennsylvania Deutsch, those soggy Scots, the Irish up in Pilkington Township, stained and chipped like teeth, they arrive to a pink May or June, not wishing to meet what was already there. To have started out hard like they did, hard, hasping the fangs off the home range, pre-poisoning what was up ahead until it radiated back a black, a black, not baying, not pacing the fur-fluffed dens, not in heat, not cold-blooded, absolutely nothing beyond the kerosene reach to greet them, but an ordinary, orderly threading of placid Holsteins through the night air to one door, to one door, to the hay, to a safe regional story, safe as one lit window, they all huddled behind. In the time it took me to get here, in the time it takes to count to history in our heads, in that amount of time, the orchards and the disc plow and all the plowed fields went missing. And the grasslands. And the uppermost alive zone of that Wentworth soil column that the grasslands had built out of all their shitting and rotting. This went missing too. And those who came from this place and those who came to this place, the honeybees and the native bees, these are also moving in all directions. And most of the trees.
Thank you so much, Karen. She disappeared already. Thank you. So the next poet uh, that we are so pleased to invite up to the front is Liz Howard. Um, and so in interestingly, um, I had met Karen Houle, and one day Karen told me about this amazing human and said, hey, let's go for a walk together with this amazing human. And so Liz and Karen and I walked through the woods picking mushrooms and talking and learning about the Rare Charitable Reserve. Um, and so it's very exciting that we went from mushrooms to here <laughs> with two of our poets, so it's, it's pretty fabulous. So Liz Howard is a poet, she's an editor and educator. Her work explores Anishinaabe ways of knowing, cosmology, ecology, and the philosophy and neuroscience of consciousness. Her first collection, Infinite Citizen of the Shaking Tent, won the 2016 Griffin Poetry Prize and was shortlisted for the 2015 Governor General's Award for Poetry. Her second collection, Letters in a Bruised Cosmos, was shortlisted for the 2022 Griffin Poetry Prize and the Trillium Poetry Prize. She is the 2023 Shaftesbury Creative Writer in Residence at Victoria College in the University of Toronto and will be joining Concordia University's Department of English as an assistant professor of creative writing in June 2023. So born and raised in Treaty 9 territory in Northern Ontario, she currently lives in Toronto. So please join us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jane. It's lovely to be called an amazing human. And I would like to thank all the amazing humans uh, here this evening. Thank you so much for taking time to uh, be part of this grand experiment of poetry and, uh, and imagery. Uh, thank you, Jane, uh, for inviting me and uh, Roberta uh, as well for putting this event together and an honor to uh, share this space with Majhor and, uh, and Karen as well. Okay. So I'll read uh, three poems, one short, two kind of long, but we'll get through them. This is uh, Probability Cloud. The universe broadcasts its lifespan in radiant heat. I need to believe my account will outpace its ending. Technical oracle, a feed that repeats itself, a reckoning. What I felt was complete disorientation but the night crossed out sky is more than a map to read into the end and origin of everything. There is a guilt that folds into me like humanity, a darkness in the signal, a mark science confides is evidence of another universe, the collision of an afterbirth. If I continue, can I hold the body beyond its contact traces of violation and intimacy? The palimpsest furniture of our specious present, a succession of excess. I am here, after all, for decadence and silence. See this decadence? A bloom beneath the skin of my invitation. Not, Not truth, truth, but, but surface. surface. Brain, Brain mapping. mapping. I might sit in a chair and watch as a stranger's brain appears on the screen, slice by slice. I could plot a correlate of thoughts. Still, I will never know you, only myself in relation. A rape in every generation of my line within the time of photography. A heritable loom of methylated DNA. How to speak this quiet violence that has separated me from history. Have I made myself accessible enough? There is a real power in the semi-permeable, danger of the underbelly exposed, 
trip wires of any tree rooting itself to the ground. In the forest, I would often trip where the roots surfaced in partial relief against the pine needles. Smelling of sifted blood in full summer, iron oxides, ochre. Now I paint my body with Sephora. Exhaustion is a hall of waiting. I think because I am a feeling thing, a thing inside entropy. Neural effigy, what is it to be found innocent or at least not guilty? With my health in my hand, at the end of this inverted hospital, I make a sign of the cross over the lack of applause. I set out in my work dress into the back seat of a strange of a stranger's car. A beautiful day in an accent I can't place. The worn spillage of North York goes on in burnt umber brickwork, and I have myself become a stranger. When I enter the hospital, I see Kafka's face. He stares out at me from a silkscreen in Warhol's Ten Portraits of Jews of the 20th Century. Sometimes the lobby is filled with the smell of frankincense and the sound of women singing in Hebrew. Many of the eldest elderly came here as children after the war, survivors. This is a place of final refuge and a place where I assist with research into the cognitive mechanisms of the living human brain. The walls of the upper floors of the research wing feature work by Inuit, as well as Native American artists. On Fridays, after the lab meeting, I will stare into the eyes of a man's portrait, an unnamed warrior who resembles my great-grandfather. My great-grandfather fought in the First World War. I was able to get a PDF of his war records off of a genealogy site. He was shot in the back in France, the bullet just a few inches shy of his heart. I later learned his sons also fought in the Second World War, and what they saw left them unable to speak any of it. One uncle took what he couldn't say to the train that killed him. I scattered my father above those tracks. History is a sewing motion along a thin membrane. Pia Mater, Dura Mater, Tender Mother, Hard Mother. Can I still learn to feel protected by what encloses me. I've cast my lot, deadheaded into an estuary Monday, a split hair, efficacious, at the dam's ready, my timber silt hard, cast tributaries, a brother's ideation among the earth metals slided, rivulets of nickel ore, smelted sulfuric, for years before he was born. I've got promises and roses and plastic amber cylinders for remedy. I've got to ask a question with lichen in it, my hair with streaks of caribou moss in it. Give it up, my bad ankles and wet temperament. I dreamt this morning of a worm near translucent evacuated from a wound in my side, not unlike the last wound of Christ. And I thought, this is the howling worm who with his dark secret love would my life have destroyed. Because yesterday I obsessed over Blake's The Sick Rose, recited it five times, the five holy wounds, the invisible worm that flies through the howling storm of Blake, and I thought that worm itself is howling a howling worm that rests in a bed of crimson joy as a wound is a rose, flesh bloomed as belief 
And I and dreamt, I dreamt also, also of a poet who was a prophet, prophet. And, I and I went with her and others to Coney Island, Island, a place I've never been. And we, and we climbed into the bucket seats of a ride to hear her speak about charmed, about, about sorry, sorry, the motion, the motion of, of the stars, stars charmed quirks, how to how distill, distill reality, reality into, into intention. intention. And some, and some women, women learned, learned this secret and began, began to flip atomically, atomically simultaneously, simultaneously, changing positions with each other. A man, a man appeared on the fairground with a rifle and, and fired high caliber rounds, rounds at their faces. faces. But almost, almost instantaneous, instantaneous to the moment of impact, impact the, danger, the damage would be rearranged as if as nothing had happened. happened. A reversal, a reversal of physical, physical change, change over, over and over again. again. My younger brother appeared as a as small boy, boy and caught a bullet to, to the, the forehead. forehead. I only, only knew enough to heal this one wound in order to return him to the world. As a as child, sometimes, sometimes I would receive a flick to the center of my forehead, a flick to the skin above the skull bone that houses the frontal pole, a sight in concert with other structures that is said to synthesize the present tense I experience as me. Brief habits. Minor, minor passions, passions ill-considered Ill missives into the drain of days. Of Always it is like this, this. thrumming, thrumming to, my to my own dark, dark frequency, frequency like, like a broken, a broken lark, lark under a maple, maple tree. tree. All, All the, the night assembles my subject. subject. All the All night, night the shape of one's self. self. And, and what, what do you, you find, find there, there beyond, beyond the quiet? The quiet? and the and dark, dark. That, that I was, I was to do away, away with, with all of it, yet, yet decided, decided to remain. To Reforge myself, myself inside, inside tomorrow's, tomorrow's humidex, a slant and listless, answer, answer the messages, messages. Order, order eggs and, and begin, begin again. again. I must I pursue, pursue the future, future pulling dawn through, through the needle, needle point of compass, compass north. north. Make, Make me the sort of animal who knows when to take cover. A shaking dress, my hide blazing in the territory of the truly sensate. This is called This Nocturne Went Summer. Expectant ions in the wettest summer on record, having neither God nor country nor countenance, I should project my drowning into the heronry. Little clusters of rust coagulate my veins. Such is the feeling. Epigenetic pearls of an ending drive. Sometimes I find myself horrid like Proust, like Kafka or Nanabosho given to moods and vapors and sickness, what cannot stand because I am female and therefore suspect, furtive, unruly. I think sometimes there is something of a rent or curie or the moon in me, and also every woman I meet living on the streets. The uncertainty of me driving a hot spark into the center of my solar plexus such that, I, such that I cannot tell the difference between failure and illness. Capital milks its stress cortisol to grow a horror in the body. It finds us all. Time knows what it does or it doesn't. Is it truly a sequence that is continuing? I might suck time from the ridge of your lips. I think the city negates me, yes and no. 
the mess I've made of things. I'm given to the question mark, the ellipsis. The future has already happened, and I understand nothing. A child cries on the street, and the mother answers, I don't care. Another woman walking past in expensive spandex says into her phone, whatever I have risked, I stand to earn. I cannot hunt. I lock the door when you go away with my love. And then with fern in hand, I stand recalcitrant. I am bogged, a pustule of astrocytes. It is possible. The rest has ended. I brought the vena cava as far as postponing the present. Here is the list, the date, the face, the hour. Soft courage. I miss my ever so refined, smooth exit, concomitant, contour kit. Breath became a danger, set in endocrine relief, a sweet antiquity outside of sin. Modest head, who has yet to pilfer your coffers? Stonewall, green as any word when I come to, and the popcorn ceiling is a testimony I can't understand. At work, a superconducting magnet lulls in its hull below the hospital, a hungry field of probability where each observer is a privileged center. I keep getting lost in the halls while the last suture of my skull closes its account. I dream of places I have lived before in which I am an unremarkable agent. Every screen is a stun gun, a spent stud. I scroll as from the non-place of a lobotomy. At night, I place a pressed note of melatonin under my soul and pray for a repeat. The day was disinterested in me. I can't simply be the secretary of this contagion that loosed me upon the world with so many holes that must be probed and assessed for progress. I can't offer my recent kill as a solvent or an antidote. I could take your mouth as I can't help but take your mouth out of this stillborn word and render it a new communion. Am I a disaster about my nerves outside of you, waiting for my humors to run clear? A colonial notion, so said my affection, a lining of greenery within the posture. Late summer. I swing it like the spirit that comes out of my mouth, the aggregate of my mouth, a sit-in. I am congregating in an alcove, an achronological history of tones, as if I already knew the answer. Purchase the derivative, the transform, all sinusoidal descriptions of mercenary light. The desperation that exits me is not truth, but surface. Can I spend the night? Can I spend the whole surface in one night? Memory stalks, all axons and familial haunts, incisors against your lower lip, a brainstem connection that potentiates all want and loss. Everything we like to think is possible in art. Without a kind of gruesome beauty, I'd said then, why not? My, back, my box is packed, full of smudged ink, and simply living exhausts me. The remainders I stack, cold, compressed resemblances, the lack in my language redacts me, the sprung brain of a creature under duress, a name I call myself. What is it that John Clare wrote? I am the self-consumer of my woes running through the six with my woes. Ontario, will you remember my face, my debts, my attempts at excellence? As for the rest who passed through me like silt, did you forget when I said that the best is yet? Do I intend an extended meditation on the impossibility of object relations so late in the game? The lesser pox that rests in me, a deep, cold water lake. 
all, all the, the skins, skins, a fiber silk, silk of a nerve stimulus, stimulus. <laughs> wedded, wedded to, to infinity. infinity. The, sky the sky has a nickel sheen. sheen. False, False rapids and birch and, and bottle caps in an old code of surety. Each day I wake and rewrite this, and in doing so, destroy my memory. I mind an intracranial system of service roads. I mind the woods. When your hand crested the iliac of my hip, and took up this branch, a whip of lilac, the jurisdiction of my heart, a fall of red clovers all over the township. Let this dark summer displace the original hour of our mutual birth. What reappears here? The night I crossed out. Thank you so much. Miigwech.